Okay, today we're going to lay concrete blocks under an existing structure. What we have is a 16 by 16 cabin that we built, and when we build it, we put it on piers. And uh, what we decided to do was add on to this cabin, and so in order to do so, uh, we decided to make a total foundation of concrete blocks. So the real question is, how do you uh, put concrete blocks under an existing foundation? Well, of course, we created our footing, as you see down there at the bottom. Pardon the uh, coaxial cable for our, our internet. But uh, uh, once you pour your footing, and, and you'll have to see an existing video to, on, on how to create a footing, create it square and level, uh, we, we, we made a footing out of concrete and uh, and then we'll we laid the first layer blocks at the bottom and as you can see we filled them with concrete that makes them stronger because the next layer as you may recall uh, in, in one of our other videos about anchor bolts you're not going to be able to put an anchor bolt in these because you can't get the concrete in it the top layer is not going to have concrete it's just going to be supported on top of a, a layer of blocks that's filled, all of them are filled with concrete. So, obviously, first thing you got to do is jack up your uh, your structure. And in this case, it's a cabin, so uh, there's there's not a lot of uh, uh, strength in jacking up a 16 by 16 cabin. If you're jacking up a bigger house, by all means, you're going to have to use house jacks and, and use a a sophisticated system. I am not going to uh, instruct anyone on how to jack up their own structure. Every structure is different, has different weight requirements, different jack requirements. You're going to have to uh, uh, seek a uh, a professional in regards to uh, what size of structure you have if you're going to do this. Now, so, so what we do is we uh, have to put this uh, block in on top of mortar and create another layer all the way down, which we'll get to here in a minute. And uh, uh, and then once uh, the mortar is dry, you give it a certain amount of time. Uh, it depends on what kind of mortar you're using. Uh, then you can sit your house down on top of the block. Now you're also going to want to put the uh, uh, it's a foam uh, sill plate uh, type uh, insulation between your block and your sill plate. And as you can see, the first thing we did before we even laid, put in all the blocks was we put this sill plate on, which is a 2x8 treated. And you use treated because it's uh, uh, close to moisture. It, the masonry blocks uh, attract moisture and it's close to the ground. And so you want to use treated. And so what we did is we, we went up and in with uh, uh, deck screws. And just screwed it up to the and into the uh, into the joist that's here, and so that was done first. So that way the sill plate sets right down on top of the blocks, which in between the blocks and the sill plate is the foam insulation. And you can uh, uh, look; it comes in a roll. Uh, uh, you can buy them any any uh, hardware store, lumber yard like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, uh, all the, all the above should have them. They're eight inches wide for a block, so it's perfect. And uh, you, you just lay it in there, and that'll seal your uh, foundation. But what it doesn't do is anchor to the blocks, like if you're using anchor bolts. So what you have to do is uh, create a system underneath where you uh, pour concrete in a hole, and you put in a uh, anchor like they use on mobile homes is a good is a good anchor, and you anchor your house that way uh, but it's still resting level on the blocks you just don't have it anchored to the blocks like you would if you were building blocks first put the sill plate down your anchor bolt and uh, and built your joists up on top of the sill that's already anchored down it's a little different process here but the big trick is how to put those blocks if you jack your house up you've got a very limited space to put your mortar put your block in there without really making a mess and so I want to show you a little trick uh, we've got Linda the builder mixing our mortar and when she's done and has the mortar ready well here we'll show you how to uh, put those blocks in a kind of an easy little way a trick I was shown by my family 
the, the real builders. Okay, I want to show you what kind of mortar we're using here. Uh, this is a, uh, the, the brand is Ashgrove uh, Pro Mix uh, Portland Lime Mortar. As you can see, it's type S. And it says, used for laying brick, block, or stone, perfect for adhering a joint stone veneer, stucco base, scratch coat. Uh, just add water. It's pre-blended. You do not have to add uh, cement and um, sand. Like uh, some of some, uh, the, the real special uh, uh, professional, I should say, um, foundation concrete block layers, mason, masonry guys, they, um, they mix their own. This is pre-mixed. This is ready to use. You just add water and, and you're ready to go. And it works really good. It's about six, seven bucks a bag in our market, which is uh, the Missouri Ozarks. And I think we got this at Lowe's. And it's a, it's a good product. We've used it on all our blocks. You can see down here the ones that we've, that we've got done. And so uh, we're, we're happy with this product. So Lynn is mixing up this here, and we'll, uh, we'll show you how to put it to use. Okay. I'm going to show you a little trick here. As you can see, we don't have a lot of space uh, between the sill and the, and the blocks. And so you got to put mortar down. And how do you get that block in there without really uh, straining yourself and messing up your mortar? Well, the trick is get yourself a couple pieces of pipe. And these are half-inch uh, PVC. They work perfect. Um, and what you do is you, you uh, lay your mortar. As you can see, uh, uh, Linda, the builder over there, is uh, putting her mortar in and, uh, and getting ready for a block. And then what you do is you just lay these pipes down inside the mortar, uh, kind of spaced out evenly. And then you just, from the side, roll your block up on the pipes, and then you pull the pipes out. So we're going to demonstrate that here and show you how to do that. Okay, so basic understanding uh, that it, uh, concrete block is, is roughly 15 and a half inches, 15 and 5 eighths. They should be 15 and a half for a quarter inch mortar on each side. And so uh, that's where you just need to make sure you leave a little gap on each end uh, for, for your mortar. We, you put the mortar on the, the end of the block that you're adjoining to, and you just you press it in uh, to uh, till you get your, your width that you need, and then you should be evenly spaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these tubes with just a little bit on the outside, and lay them inside the mortar like this. slide the block down I'm gonna lift it up and slide them over the tubes and the tubes help it keep it level and it does move your mortar but that's okay you can slide the mortar in you just pull the tubes out like so and your blocks in place above the mortar you can spread your mortar out use your trowel and your fingers like I'm doing but, uh, uh, Take your trowel, you, you tap it like this, and it's a little high, so you just tap it down. You, the butt of your, your trowel is the perfect, it's made for that. That's what the pros do anyway, and I'm not a pro. I like to do things like the pros do. Hand, but what I don't have, the pros have, is experience. And the pros are out there working, and I'm here fiddling around making videos. But if you can find someone to help you, that's great. So, I've got my quarter inch, tap it down so it's level with the other block. want to you can kind of use this block this uh, tube to pry down a little bit it's level you need to get you a little level because you're not going to be able to do a whole heck of a lot they have those little bit levels you can put in here to make sure your blocks level you can also shake it you can, once you got it in there you can shake it and press it and then you then you can get it level George, 
think we got it. This one's ready. So that's the little trick using your uh, tubes that I made. As you can see, they just have a little mortar on them, and you can wipe that off and scrape it off with the trowel. And use them for your next block. And now that we're here, we're going to need to uh, do the same thing for the next one. So once we get our mortar down, we'll we'll give you another demonstration so you can see it again. Okay, as you see, Linda's got a wet masonry sponge. Your masonry sponge uh, wet just to clean your uh, 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 grout lines, mortar lines. Same thing. Uh, levels them off and gets the mortar off of the surface and leaves it between the blocks. Doing both sides. Get it done right. Now she's ready to do the second block. And now she's going to put mortar down for the next block. And Linda has been learning how to do this and doing a really good job getting the hang of it. You've been generous with the mortar. Basically put it where your lines are. Nice to have it in a pre-mixed bag that we all use add water and it goes on so easy. And the consistency of your mortar makes all the difference whether it's going to stick or not. As you can see her sticks pretty good so she got her consistency very well. If it's not sticking and standing up uh, it's a problem. You need to either add more water if it's too you know if it's too dry and you know if it's too wet. And you'll practice enough, you'll know if it's just right. Sorry about that sunlight glaring through down there. It's probably making it difficult to see. Hopefully you can see this. She's getting her mortar. You're working in a tight space, so now you got to kind of take your time and just do it right. It's not a problem. Okay, so she's, now she's going to lay her tube center. Yep, perfect. And push them down inside the mortar. And uh, slide a block to her. Sorry, I got the shaky camera. I had to slide the block for her. And she'll just push it up on top of the first tube. Second, and looky there. Lays it in there just, just so. And now she can pull the tubes out. Pretty nice. She's got it. That's how she has got a little piece of a veneer down there on the ground, like a piece of old paneling to make it softer for her knees. So there I think that's a very good example of how to put blocks in without fighting it. Because you really can fight it if you don't have a system like those little tubes make a big difference. It's amazing how, how they can do that. Little pieces of pipe. Half inch PVC really do the trick. So she's going to mortar in these and 
and we're going to continue to run across. As you see, we uh, we had a septic problem. Uh, we got two uh, actually have two septic entrances on this property, and the one that we found when we originally purchased the property and, and tapped into ended up being broken down in, in the ground somewhere and it would have cost a lot of money to dig it clear out and I think it's actually uh, over on the neighbor's property uh, in the Neesman area and uh, the city uh, told us uh, the public works I guess I should say told us where another one was and uh, so we ended up uh, changing the direction of our septic and running it out the side of the house and so we're going to fill this in with uh, there will be dirt uh, up above it so it will be underground and we'll do another video when it gets time to, to do that. And so, uh, just uh, as you can see, Linda's filling in the gaps a little bit where we were short on mortar. Not a hard thing to do. And then we'll continue rolling the, the uh, blocks in on those tubes and finish out all the blocks under the uh, existing structure. Works pretty well.